Good morning. We've got a beautiful day for this. We can get everybody just kind of squeeze in here so we can so you can really see everything that happens. Good morning to all of you. We're going to start this morning with the presentation of the colors by the Davenport uh, Fire Department Honor Guard. Um, they will stop right here in front of the podium, and if that time you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance we, before we post the colors. So, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take note of the flyover, John. Thank you very much to our honor guard. Mayor Gluba, council members, city staff, Galante Architecture, Bush Construction, to our public, and most importantly to me, Davenport Fire Staff, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you on this beautiful morning, my optimism held out, to the groundbreaking of the new and renovated Central Fire Station. The department has been waiting for this project to begin for over 20 years. We're grateful to the support and vision of our mayor and this council in approving the necessary funding to make it a reality. And so it is my honor to ask Mayor Gluba to speak with you this morning. Thank you, Chief, and good morning, all. What a great day it is in Davenport. Alderman Large Meeker and Gordon, Alderman Dunn and Edmund, Alderman Boom and Ambrose, Alderman Barnhill and Justin, Alderman Mat Matson and Alderman Tompkins, Fire Chief Washburn, Firefighters All, Ted Galante and his architectural team, A.J. Loss of Bush Construction Management, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. Building a new central fire station has been talked about for over 30 years. Because of the work of this city administration, this city council team, and mayor, we are gathered here today to break ground and actually commence work on this long overdue project. The cost for the entire project is $15.2 million. Two weeks ago, your Davenport City Council approved more than $4 million in construction contracts related to renovating this 113-year-old central fire station. Plans call for saving much of this old historic station, but the part of the building built in 1940 will be torn down and be replaced with a rectangular two-story building with five fire apparatus bays creating an L with the original station. In addition, this major construction project will keep a lot of local contractors busy and put a lot of local workers to work. 
It is important to note that of the seven contractors performing the work, all but one, all but one are local Quad City companies. Continental Fire Sprinkler Company of Davenport for the fire sprinkler work, $160,450. Crawford Construction of Rock Island, heating and air conditioning and ventilation, $734,800. Northwest Mechanical of Davenport, plumbing, $496,000. Triber Construction Company of Davenport, building and site construction, $795,520. J.D. Kohler Electric of Davenport, $1,193,900. Miller Trucking and Excavation of Silvis, $417,620. All staying in our local economy. Also take note that this multi-million dollar construction project completes, completes the major facility needs of the city. When complete, the city will have all, all its major facilities in good repair, in most cases representing the state-of-the-art facilities. This new building, ready for the next 100 years, will join our state-of-the-art police headquarters, our excellent public works facility, our two new branch libraries, and our renovated central library, along with our renovated city hall, and our parks department headquartered in our new or in our city owned Rivers Edge Recreational Center. Ten years ago, our police officers worked in a deteriorating building without windows. Our dispatchers worked in cramped and dysfunctional space. Our parks personnel worked out of hand me down cottages. Our city hall had boarded up windows. This project completes our facilities investment and provides more efficient and more supportive work environment for our excellent city employees. These new infrastructure improvements also anchor neighborhoods and will serve generations of Davenport well into the future. Thanks to the vision and good sense of our city council team for completing many of these projects while interest rates are low and money is cheap a big savings to the taxpayers of Davenport. And thanks to the people of Davenport for their support in helping us make Davenport truly a great city. God bless our firefighters and God bless the people of Davenport and God bless our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gluba. And I might mention that in addition to the, the contracts for uh, he, our prime contractors that he talked about, we also had nearly another $7 million um, go through Committee of the Whole last night. And many of those contractors are also from the Davenport and the QC area. So it is very important that we, that we keep that money local. In the summer of 2012, a team made up of fire, mem fire department members, city staff, and elected officials diligently reviewed proposals from architects interested in this project. Ted Galante Architecture Studios from Cambridge, Massachusetts stood out from the rest. Their strong history of renovation of historic fire stations set them apart. In the three years that we have worked with them, they have proven themselves to have been the best choice we could make for our project. Ted Galante, lead architect, and his team have listened closely to our needs and clearly understood our vision. And during the process, Ted and his team have been professional partners and become our friends. It is my pleasure to introduce to all of you Ted Galante of Galante Architecture Studios. Good morning. A little over a hundred years ago, Gustav, Gustav Hansen was the architect who designed the building that stands behind us. He designed that building because there was a technical issue where by backing in horse-drawn carriages to the original station was causing traffic problems, it was causing trouble. So this was designed as a drive-through station. The overhead door on the side of the building would allow the horses to come in and they would pull the vehicles into the front. A hundred years on, a little more than a hundred years on, the department is faced with a similar, very similar problem. 
backing in fire trucks from the street is a difficult thing to do. We're dro we've designed a new station that will allow all the fire apparatus to drive in from the back and come out the front, a generous apron, enough space for all the equipment, solving a number of technical problems. But we do so out of great respect for this, the oldest operating fire station west of the Mississippi. We do so out of great respect for the architect who designed this building, for the city of Davenport, and for the wisdom of the town leaders. We hope that in 100 years on, this building, which looks a bit contemporary today, blends into the, to the texture and fabric of Davenport, but also when they're fighting fires with hovercraft or whatever it may be 100 years on, people will redesign the addition 100 years later for those kinds of vehicles and continue. The city of Davenport is one of those cities that respects its history but also looks forward. It's a very um, uh, forward-looking place guided by a, a, a remarkably intelligent group of people who are, have been challenging us and um, um, embracing us to work with them in very strong ways. So we're grateful to be here and, and uh, delighted to finally see this building coming to fruition. Thank you. And in Ted's remarks, you can hear the philosophy behind our renovation and construction of this station. We are going to honor the past of this department in our city. We're going to be sure that we can serve our community today safely and efficiently. And most importantly, we're creating a structure that will prepare us to serve the future needs of this community, whatever they may be. As we get going, management of a project like this is critical to ensure it remains on track to completion and within budget. My team has heard almost every day in meetings me say, watch the budget. And so Bush Construction of Davenport has taken on this challenge. Like Galante, they have already proven themselves to be valuable partners with us. I would like A.J. Laws to say a few words for you this morning. President of Bush Construction. Uh, thanks, Chief Washburn. Uh, Bush Construction is honored uh, to be a partner with the city of Davenport for this historic uh, making project. Interesting trivia. Your invitation to this event today mentions that McCarthy Brothers performed the original stonework uh, for the 1902 construction of this fire station. Well, Patrick F. McCarthy, the founder of that company in 1897, was the first generation of what is now known four generations later as the McCarthy Bush Corporation family of companies. Since Bush Construction is one of these companies, this project is especially meaningful for us because we have the opportunity to help restore the work and continue the tradition of the man who we would consider to be our original founding father. So what can you expect to see in the coming days and months? De demolition is scheduled to begin in the next couple weeks. And in about a month or so, you'll see this portion of the building right here. Uh, it'll no longer be here. That'll be demolished. Completion of the new addition will be done right about this time next year. And by Thanksgiving of next year, the entire building will be complete for turnover uh, back to the fire station. So I've got the opportunity to address you today, but there's uh, a lot of folks behind the scenes uh, making all this happen on the Bush construction team. So I'd love to introduce a few of those folks. Uh, first and foremost, and primarily, uh, Scott Seligman, our site superintendent, and Ryan Wellborn over there in the blue and the green shirts. Uh, great work, gentlemen, and supporting them. Uh, some additional folks, uh, project executive Jared Engler, uh, chief estimator Tom Quinn, project engineer Rob Berger, and project coordinator Becky Avis. So on behalf of the Bush construction team, McCarthy Bush Corporation, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be, to be involved, and uh, congratulations on this exciting day. Okay, we're getting close. The story of a new central station began over 20 years ago. They thought about it about 30 years ago, but some planning began about 20 years ago. Since then, four different studies were completed, proposals were made, but for many reasons, the time was not right for the project to move forward. The work of Davenport Fire Department leadership, in each case, built upon previous work. The project we are now completing brings to fruition the work of many others before us. 
Their voices are in this building, and it is our intent to honor them. It's an honor this morning to recognize a one who is here with us, whose leadership did contribute to this success. Former Davenport Fire Chief John Neely is with us this morning. John, if I can see. John's here somewhere. What he's here. And uh, also our other living fire chief, uh, Chief Mark Fries, um, his input and leadership really pushed us forward to where we are today. But the department did not make this project happen on our own. Our city is led by a very strong team from the top down that has supported and assisted us whenever needed. A thank you must be given to those from the team that helped us get to this morning. Finance Director Wright and his purchasing team and the hours that they have put into this. Corporate Counsel Warner in assisting us with land purchases and agreements. Certainly for me, uh, Administrator Malin and Assistant to the, fire, to the Administrator uh, Corey Spiegel, your, your support for me through this process has been critical. Jennifer Nara and our communications team in helping me make this happen this morning. As I said, I'm glad I didn't go into special events planning. It's a bit much. Um, and then our public works team. As the, as the supervisors of our facilities within the city, they have been critical to this project. Um, Director Mike Clark could not be here this morning. He is being represented by city engineer Brian Schatt. And our project manager from Public Works, Jim Benj, is with us as well. And I also want to mention that when we began this project, we had the assistance of a man who really believed in our mission, who came and rode on our fire trucks overnight, missed a few calls, trying to get to the rig, but he believed in us. He believed in our vision. And um, we believe that his heart is with us here today as we complete this project. And that was um, Sam Giganti, and I'd like to welcome his wife with us this morning. Now, in addition to internal partnerships, it is also critical that we have community partnerships. We cannot grow a community on our own. It takes partnerships within that community to make it happen. Growth takes that, that assistance. And I must say, we found a great partner in the Eastern Iowa Community College. They have allowed us the space needed for our drive off of 3rd Street and provided office space for our entire administration in the call building. So we must give thanks, because this would not happen without their assistance, to uh, Chancellor Doucette, Dr. Paper, and her team. Thank you, Chancellor Doucette. And finally, my thanks must go to the DFD team. The voices of our DFD members from, the, from since 1902 reside in this building. So it was critical that the voices of our current firefighters were heard as we developed this project. They are a part of it. It is theirs for the future, and so they had to be included. So I just want to list our team that was uh, led by Operations Chief Pickford with the assistance of District Chief Mike Ryan. And those were Assistant Chiefs Heyman and Howard, District Chiefs Ganey and Carlston, Captains Lesline, Smith, Smith, Metzger, and Miller, Lieutenants Terrell, Birkin, Fuller, Deckert, Lewis, and Tyler Schmidt, along with Engineers Mutzel, Howard, Scriven, and Kramer, and Firefighter Heblin. Their assistance was critical in getting us to where we are today, and their assistance will continue to move us forward in the future. And with that, it's finally time to break ground on the new Davenport Central Fire Station. The ceremony will have a few phases. First, we're going to have all of our elected officials, along with myself, Chief Bickford, um, our representative from the union, the president, Ryan Hanian, is here with us today. Brian Schatt from Public Works will join us. So if you all would make your way up here, if you'll look down, there's a helmet with your name on it here. Now I'm going to have a second phase of our internal crew. If I can have Chiefs Heyman and Howard, Ryan Wellborn, again Ryan Hanian, uh, Mike Ryan. 
Jim Benj, you're part of this? Jim? We're going with the real hard hats now, okay? <laughs> Okay, as I said, we're involving our team in this. So, this is going to move inside. Members of our Central Station Committee are going to have the opportunity to take a sledgehammer to the wall and begin our internal demolition process. So anyone who's interested in observing that will go through the door right here. If you don't want to watch that, we do have refreshments inside, and also you can have a little tour of the building if you would like one. So thank you very much. Ready?